Let's get into it. Soul Not For Sale podcast. We got Joe Rogan bringing up the culling of 200,000 cattle. That is something that's uh, been proposed to happen in Ireland. And we all have heard about that. I've made a couple of videos about that. For some reason, in this episode, in this clip that I'm about to show you, Jamie brings up how it's potentially not a true story. And I just had to go into a little bit of fact check mode in this whole thing. So that's what you're going to be seeing. Also, James Lindsay touches on something called net zero by 2050. I'm going to be showing you some stuff about that. So we're just going to be talking about where the story actually came from of the culling of 200,000 cows. Um, more. So we're going to talk about it from the perspective of a YouTuber. Then we're going to go a little deeper and get the aspect, uh, the uh, perspective of a farmer. Then we're going to go a little deeper and actually hear the government talking about it. The government in Ireland talking about it. Then we're going to touch on net zero in 2050. We're going to talk about what that is. We're going to talk about the nonsense behind all of that. And then we're going to show you a little example of what Ireland is dealing with in terms of their politicians. Very interesting stuff. Don't forget about IamCoachColin.com. We got Soul Not For Sale. Different variations. Cancel Hollywood. Stop worshipping celebrities. Public Enemy Number 1. And even the shirt that I have on right now. Discount code is I am Coach Colin, all capital letters, all one word, one L in the name, Colin. Let's get to it. A lot of eggs, like nothing comes out of, of meat. A, yeah, it comes out of a chicken. It doesn't come out of a box. Yeah, and I always feel way better. I've I go I've done a bunch of different diets. I've tried a bunch of different things. Well, they're after that too, right? You know, like no beef consumption. Yeah, well, that's another one. That's, that's in the absolute zero paper too. No beef, no lamb, <sighs> zero, absolute zero. Because apparently it's really bad for the environment or whatever. And the question is, like, how are you going to get people to go along with that? The Salt Lake, tr the Salt Lake Tribune just put out an article yesterday. I made fun of it on Twitter, talking about the same thing. It's like we need to get no meat, no dairy, and then we can have like better diets or whatever. How are you going to kill all those cows? Uh, you gonna? It's up to you. You go do it. Jordan Peterson says that it's proof that it's a uh, earth worshiping or Gaia worship cult because they're sacrificing cows to the weather. That is wild. Like That's Jordan, wild you got a point, good, brother. That's a very good point. Sacrificing cows to the weather, like in Ireland, they they passed some law where they had to kill like two hundred thousand cows. That was what we were talking about. Me and Jordan were talking about that. And <sighs> what the fuck are you guys talking about? Yeah, well, you're out of your mind. You're, you're stopping people from making food. Are you fucking crazy? It's and a, well, by, meanwhile, China is making thousands or, or how many how many coal plants they have? Three hundred something. Well, I don't know how many they have. I know how many they're making. But all told, and I've gone over and breathed the air. There. Yeah, I've been over there and breathed the air. Like on a bad day, like on a nice day, it's a nice day. It's the same as usual. Or like here, but three days of the week, it's like Blade Runner. It's like what the hell's going on? It depends on which way the wind is blowing, and otherwise, and like your life is literally poison. Jesus Christ! Like your eyes are burning for no reason. Here's the worst part. So you get off the plane. I don't, if you've been to China, I don't want to waste your time. No. Okay, you get off the plane, and immediately you can smell it. It smells kind of like glue and dirty cardboard and petro. You can smell the pollution immediately. So, but you know, about an hour in, you can't smell it anymore. You're used to it. Right. Until the first time you go take a piss and you smell it again because it's in your blood. Oh, wow. And you're like, oh, no. Oh, wow. You smell the pollution in your piss? Like the first, asparagus? Only the, yeah, like the first time. But then, oh, my God. Then you just kind of like, then you become completely used to it and you don't notice it anymore. That's the thing about all factory senses. Like you become accustomed to smells. That's why people that live in places that have like, if you go past like a slaughterhouse, yeah. like have you ever done that? Yeah. That fucking yeah, smell, yeah. you're like, how do these people live with I, this? I got lost in, in the smokestack part of Texas one time and Ooh. there were some smells on the on the road even. Yeah, it used to be New Jersey when you go Oof. past the factories in Jersey, you'd be like, what the fuck? And they're just billowing smoke yeah, out into the sky. Just billowing smoke yeah. out to the sky. No, that's this nasty. fucking smell. Imagine this is your town, dude. You got to get out of here. I'll tell you what. It's like, that's China. So what I said when I went over there the first time, so this is kind of relevant is this whole like ESG model. The first time I went over there, as I said, I came home and people were like, well, what's it like? And I was like, well, I looked around and it's obviously communist because you can see weird shit where like people are like fake doing fake jobs. Like it's obvious that they just are get paid an income to look busy. Like stuff like a dude like sitting on the, on his hands and knees hitting the ground with a hammer when the boss is around, like doing nothing. Like I went to a bank one time when I was over there to change like $200 so I could have some cash. And they were like, oh yeah, the bank doesn't change money on Tuesdays. And I was like, what? And then I got bumped into by this uh, janitor and that's like, I guess taboo or something. Cause he got, it was, he was way too worried about having bumped into a customer than I thought he should have been. But maybe I just don't know the culture. So I was like, he was like, he bumps into me and I know like 10 things in Chinese. So I was like, Mei Wenti, which means like no problem. And all of a sudden you could see, you know, they all did the little, like, you know, you're not supposed to do racial micro microaggressions, but they did the little face. They're like, you know, because I did the whole like Asian surprise face because I spoke Chinese. Right. So all of a sudden the lady behind the desk was like, oh, I just remembered. 
we do change money on Tuesday. Because now she thought I could go tell on her in Chinese. Whoa. I went to, I was at Starbucks and they wrote white man on my cup, Byron on my cup. So interesting. Ireland isn't calling cows for climate, but maybe it should be. What the fuck? Oh my God. What the fuck, not, It's not happening, it's not but it should story. be. It's not a true story. It's fake. No, I mean, yeah, it said it came from Elon's tweet that came from something else. And then one looked into, oh, here you go. Like the rumor started here. Okay, here it goes. Uh, the rumors of Ireland's dairy call landed in a media and online context primed by the Dutch case for outrage. Case in point, Musk's comment was in response to a tweet by a right-wing provocateur about a story in the obscure Wyoming publication called Cowboy State Daily that accused Ireland's government of bovine sidle intentions. That article, in turn, cited an op-ed from the British newspaper The Telegraph railing against Ireland's alleged mooted cow massacre and warned in apocalyptic terms of an eco-modernist agenda to do away with conventional meat altogether. The Telegraph did not cite its sources, but it likely drew on an article published the previous day in the Irish newspaper, The Independent. That story reported on the internal government document discussed above, including the proposal that 195,000 cows be culled over three years at the government's expense to help achieve its ambitious climate goals. But hold on a second. It goes on to continue about how it would be so hard to even do it. But that story, but hold up, go yeah. back there. That story reported on the internal government document. It's, yeah, it's so this, what is the internal this, government document? They would need to call 65,000 cows every year in order to meet the proposed so, climate goals. So they're just saying okay. that if we, re there's no way to meet these goals. The only way to meet these goals in terms of what the impact agriculture would have, we'd have to kill 65,000 cows a year. So they're not saying we should do that. Right. But they are at least saying that's on the table. That's what I talked to these ranchers out in New Mexico not that long ago, and they were telling me that that's the way all the policies are. It's that to meet whatever the you know new environmental standard is so that you don't get somebody breathing down your neck or maybe you don't get fines or whatever, that they're actually impossible. He said that the only way you can meet some of these is to have no cows and no people on the land whatsoever. And I don't know if they're actually going to like move on that, but that's this is what I'm talking about with – because it's not – not in the UK Fire's Absolute Zero document. It's 100% in there that this says no beef, no lamb at all. So those have got to go. By 20, I guess, 50, there will be zero consumption of beef and lamb under the ambitious net zero or absolute zero, I should say, climate. By 2050, zero. Zero. And so do they plan on making cows extinct? Do they plan on keeping a breeding population that you could fucking just keep the species alive with? What the fuck are they going to do? I don't know, but they talk a lot about the emissions of those, but then they also say that when there was the massacre of the bisons, that that was really bad. And bisons make a lot of emissions, but there was no like climate emergency from all the bison. So, I mean, I don't know. Well, the, the climate science Science is also a religion. If you have anyone that goes over the actual data and differs with what the narrative is, that person is a crazy person and a climate denier. A denier, that's right. You can't even Same. have discussions about the actual, like the real numbers. You can't talk about like the real history right. of the climate of Earth. You can't talk about the dangers of global cooling. If you just talk about the dangers of global cooling, you're a climate denier. Yeah, you can't talk about whether we're in a natural warming cycle or if it's got, you know, or whatever. Right. Not saying that we are, I don't know, but well, the you can't talk is, about it. This is one fact for sure we know 100 percent that the, the the temperature of earth has never been static that's right it goes ever, up and down ever 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 when they do those core samples and they go back thousands and thousands and thousands of years it's never been static it's always been all over the fucking place and there's a bunch of very variables that cause it to change yeah, that's right they know that and they know that humans are having some impact we're having some impact what is the impact and how much of it should we throw the fucking society that we all live in into the gutter to try to fix. Right. Or hand over all of the power to right. a to handful dictators. of unelected, yeah, unelected dictators. Yeah. Uh, these so called stakeholders. Like, does, why do does it, Bill Gates know more about all of this than everybody? Like, I get it. He built Microsoft. Like, he can do something. He knows something. Like, I'm not going to take that away from him. But, like, why is he like the god of vaccines and, and climate and like every other thing because he built a fucking computer? It's very weird. It's all very weird because it's just like you don't want to think it's that on the nose. You don't want to think it's like that on the nose that they're engineering the demise. I actually get hopeful when I think that they are. Uh, I'm much more afraid of it being just some random organic shit going off the rails than it is that there's some number of people who could be identified uh, I worry about as, that. as criminals. I worry about that. I worry about it. There is a lot of it is a random thing that just happens with human beings that are tribally opposed to each other. Then maybe too that, wealthy or whatever. And there's a lot of that, yeah. a lot of free time and a lot of easy living. And then it all just ramps up like everything does. Like nothing stays like this is a good way to behave. That's where religion comes in because religion does tell you this is a good way to behave and these are the tenets that you should live by. And it's not like this thing that sh you should be escalating and pushing it further and further yeah. and f further. It's like a 
perfect Joe. Joe's coming around. A lot of people in the comments are often like, you know, I've been praying for Joe. I've seen it in so many different comment sections. It's coming around, starting to realize you, you, you break open one of the books. I don't care which book it is. You know, as long as you get devout to your religion, as long as it's not Satanism, as long as you get devout to it, you'll start realizing that there's a way to be that's much better. Let me turn this off. This guy is supposed to be on the podcast. I'm not going to let him on the podcast right now because he's not media prepped. He has to be media prepped before I let him on. My buddy Moore, believe me, you guys are going to love him. He's going to be a guest on the podcast soon. Great guy. Now, let's get into it from here. Now, I'm just going to break down the clip, what you guys just heard. No cows, no people. No cows, no people on the land. What does that mean? What does that mean? Now, maybe not no cows, no people. But maybe they won't allow you to have cows. Maybe they won't allow you to slaughter cows. Maybe they won't allow you to farm anymore. Maybe that's going to be the solution. Maybe they're going to look at cattle ranching, cattle slaughter, the meat industry as something that's no good. And they're going to look at something like the cricket industry, which they've been trying to build up for so long. The cricket industry, the meat alternative industry, they're going to start pushing things like that. It's, it's funny that at the end he brought up Bill Gates. Bill Gates is a heavy investor alongside of Jeff Bezos, heavy investor in alternative meats, fake meats, lab grown meats, heavy investor in that type of technology. So when it says no, when he says no cows, no people, and it's like, how are they going to do this? What are they going to make cows extinct? Maybe. Listen, they might try to push that type of thing. Maybe just randomly we'll be like, oh, that farm blew up. That farm blew over. Something happened there. All those cows got sick. Maybe we'll start seeing that throughout the world. I wouldn't put it past these demon elite type of people. But for sure, what I do know is there will be a push, and it's already happening, towards alternative meat. And if you're somebody who wants to stick to regular meat... You will slowly, slowly will see an article that will say, do you know meat consumption is linked to white supremacy? Have you heard that guy? <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen for sure. And, and then it's going to be like, you know, the last time a bunch of people ate meat, they got this dang gung disease. I don't know what happened. I guess people got to stop eating meat. We can't trust any of the meat, guys. Then there's going to be some people who are going to be like, I want to eat the meat. And they're going to be like, oh, man, these idiots. These idiots are getting us all in trouble because they refuse to stop eating cows. Don't they know the cows are infected? It's going to be regular guys like Joe Rogan, Cam Haynes, myself, just like, oh, it's fine. Oh, God, you just got lucky. Sound familiar? We're all in this together. Just stop eating meat. That's what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> so these goals are impossible. You'll hear more about that in the video. They very much are impossible. You know why? Because the goals... Again, back to Saul Alinsky. The thing is never the thing. The thing is never the thing. So you're seeing climate change and they're pushing for all these, these, these metrics to get hit. The thing is not the thing. Not whatsoever. So what are they actually going to do? I'm going to be straight up. I'm not going to mince my words. It's a play for control. The reason that it's impossible. The thing is never the thing. Saul Alinsky. Be unreasonable. All, keep making demands. This is all from Saul Alinsky. All of this is Marxism type of stuff. I, 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 don't, I don't know. What, the Marx, Marxist doctrine. Okay. This is like their Bible. This type of stuff. Doing these type of things is, is just so ingrained. And you see it throughout the entire world. They're just being unreasonable. 200,000 cows. Well, that's just unreasonable to that sector of people who depend on those cows. Well, it's like, oh, well, we got to hit our markers. But what happens after the cows are, are culled? Well, then it's like more and more people dependent on the state. Food prices go up. All of a sudden, the bread lines get longer because more people need food. Now, all of a sudden, they can't afford regular things. It's it's so simple. It's It it makes people lack... Listen, now you're going to get into it. Let's move on to the clips. I'm going a little much. I'm going a little much. Let's get the first perspective. It's from a YouTuber. This gentleman's name is Roman... Belof Bel Belmakov, I believe his name is. Great YouTube channel. Listen to this. In order to supposedly save the planet, the government of Ireland is considering a new proposal that would kill off as many as 200,000 dairy cows over the next three years. You heard that right. The official narrative in Europe has gotten to the point where cows are seen as such a problem for the climate that government officials in Ireland 
are seriously working on a plan to kill hundreds of thousands of them in order to meet the country's emission reduction goals. Now, this particular development was uncovered by a local publication called The Irish Independent. They used a freedom of information request, similar to what we have here in America, to obtain a copy of an internal government document from within the Irish Department of Agriculture. Specifically, the plan, as it was written, calls for the killing, or as they refer to it as the culling, of 65,000 dairy cows every single year for three full years. This would, for one, represent about 10% of all the dairy cows in the whole country. And secondly, it will cost the Irish taxpayers a cool 600 million euros, which for a reference works out to be about 648 million US dollars. And of course, there are many other costs that this proposal fails to consider, such as the cost to generational farmers. Because if you suddenly find yourself to be a dairy farmer over in Ireland, well, good luck expanding your business. Good luck getting any loans from the banks, who now see this sector as a really risky business environment. And good luck keeping a profit when the government suddenly kills off 10% of your dairy production cows. Furthermore, the other factor that this proposal and many other proposals like it fail to take into consideration is the fact that by culling 10% of a country's dairy cows, all that really means is that the milk, the cheese, the yogurt, the butter, and everything else that's made from them will all just need to be imported. The Irish people aren't just going to suddenly change their dietary habits on a whim. And so, if the Irish continue to consume just as much meat and dairy as they did before, then Ireland will simply have to import more of these products from other countries. Those other countries will then have to increase their dairy cow production to meet this new demand, and so the supposed effect on the planet as a whole remains the same. Except technically, it's actually worse. Because now, not only is there still the same amount of dairy being produced on the planet, but also you now have to use trains, trucks, and ships to transport that dairy over to Ireland, which adds to the emissions in the total supply chain. And don't forget, by the way, that Ireland is essentially an island nation, and so it's not going to be cheap to ship them all that food. Then subsequently, the food that's on the supermarket store shelves will become more expensive, meaning that besides the 600 million euros that the Irish government has earmarked for this particular project, the Irish citizens, the actual Irish taxpayers, will likely be footing the bill many times more than that in the form of increased food prices. But hey, at the very least, at the end of the day, these government officials can pat themselves on the back and say that they were able to reduce the climate emissions from the dairy sector by 10%. <sighs> It's wild. Absolutely. I get riled up because it's like it's it's happening right in our faces. And I don't know what to do. I make these videos. I don't know what you can do. I, I'm but it's just it's so clear what they're trying to do. It's so clear. I love that he brought up the food prices and how that's going to escalate. It's going to end up making people dependent on the, on the state. I have that friend who just called me. The, that's the person. I should have answered. I should have got his wife on the phone. His wife is from Cuba. She know she has seen this in action. She's literally seen it in action. I'm a farmer. I make my own money. All of a sudden the government comes. Hey, we just want to, we're going to do some things here. And the next thing you know, they don't own their cows anymore. What their cows produce, they do not own all of anymore. They own a small percentage of it. It's just enough for them to sustain themselves and hopefully most of their family, never all of their family, most of their family, and the government keeps the rest. And if you dare slaughter that cow, you get 20 years in prison. That's a real thing over there. That's all they're trying. They're, this is just the very small baby steps towards that type of society. That's all it is. 100%. Now, to get to why I actually showed you this clip, it was a freedom of information request that happened. It had nothing to do. Elon Musk did not start this in a right-wing publication, blew it up into something that it's not. It's very real. I just wanted to show you the perspective from a YouTuber. We can move on from that. Here's a perspective from a farmer. Believe me, this farmer didn't get wind of Elon Musk's tweet and completely think that his world's about to come down. He's actually dealing with this in real time. Ireland is facing a cow-sized conundrum on climate change. Kill the country's iconic livestock or eliminate emissions elsewhere. It's as near to organic as you will get. Farmers like Donald Scully worry they'll be impacted by a new government policy which could call up to 200,000 cows. Will I have a business that I can pass on to my family or um, going forward. I actually don't think so. 
Currently, I'm milking just n n north of 200 cows. My father made a living on milking 40 cows. My grandfather made a living on milking 10 cows. So where are we going? Scully's herd has grown in recent years as he's done everything to keep his bottom line in the black. But that, coupled with growing demand for Irish dairy and beef exports, has sent the cattle population here soaring to 7.4 million. Cows are a key part of Ireland's rich agricultural history. In fact, there are more of these guys on this island than there even are people. But the fact remains that livestock is a major contributor to global emissions. And as the government looks to meet some of its most aggressive climate targets, it sees reducing the herd sizes at the island, even just by a little bit, as an easy way to get there. That's because studies suggest about a third of human-caused methane emissions come from livestock, primarily during the digestion process. And methane is a potent greenhouse gas. And activists say that the industry as a whole is not facing the same pressure to quickly cut back. Well, Ireland itself has set 51% emissions reductions targets across the entire economy by 2030. Agriculture, by dint of its strong lobbying power in Ireland, was able to cut a special deal for itself where it is only required to cut emissions by 25%. So they're, they've got the lightest emissions load of any sector in Ireland. In recent the lightest load. That gentleman is correct. He's some activist, right? Part of the climate cult, in my opinion. He is correct. Lightest load, but most impact on the country. The food supply, the beef supply, the dairy supply is vital to, especially an island. It's vital. So yeah, they have to cut it the least, but they have the most impact. And it's going to put key people... It's not just that he said he mentioned how it's a key part of the agriculture, the cattle, the, the farmers of any nation are key people of keeping that nation alive, keeping them well fed, keeping them so they don't have to turn to another country and say, can we have food? And then that country says, oh, well, we can send it. But it's going to cost this much. And this. that's the last thing that you want. If I could offer you this scenario that you could have 10 cows outside your house. Now, obviously, where you live, you might be an apartment, this or that. It's not doable. But you know what I mean? If I could offer you the fact that you had your own cows. OK, and let's just say you snap a finger and they get they get slaughtered. I know you don't know how to do that. OK, but let's just say I could offer you your own or you go to the grocery store. You have your own. All of a sudden you're paying dollars a pound. You still have to feed them and everything, whatever. But you have dollars a pound, just dollars. But also you go to the grocery store and those cows have all been culled. More cows have all been culled. And now to go get a steak, just a couple of steaks, it costs you $110. Which one would you prefer? Would you prefer to be able to just have your own? Put that with anything. Would you like to have to go to your neighbor's house and ask for clothing? Or would you like to have your own in your closet? Like, I'm trying to make, I have clothing everywhere. I'm just making this as simple as possible with these these uh, these these metaphors that I'm using here. Wh which would you rather? Obviously, you want your own. I wouldn't like it if I had to go to another house to get this microphone. I have my own. It's way better. If, if Ireland gets rid of all of that, it's a big problem. So now that was, was the perspective of a farmer, also the perspective of a uh, activist. Now... Again, because I'm just showing you guys that this is very real. I don't know why they would put that into the air that this is potentially not a real thing spawned by Elon Musk and just nonsensical. And I don't get it because that guy's a wizard. You know, everybody knows Jamie's a wizard, but this is very easy to find. This stuff is very easy to find. So this is actually the government. And there is a good man who's deciding to stand up to this and asking the uh, the Irish government to 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 reconsider what they're potentially going to do. Figures in the farming independence showing 200,000 cattle to be culled uh, by 2025, just in, in a year and a half's time. Uh, it's an incredible threat to the farming sector uh, at a cost of about 600 million euros. Now, a full 25% of the beef that's been imported to the European Union is now coming from Brazil. How is it environmentally friendly to fell large swathes of the Amazon, import that beef from Brazil to substitute 
for Irish beef uh, that is being culled here in this state. There's a significant threat hanging over farmers in this country, and we must have a debate to crystallise exactly what the plan of this government is. So, there you go. It's, it's being talked about in their government. This is not a made-up thing. It has, you know, Elon did talk about it, but so did Joe, and so did I, and so did so many other people. This is a real thing that's happening in Ireland, and it's a crazy thing. And yes, it has been proposed, but that's like me saying to you, oh, the Restrict Act, oh, that's a made-up story. It's like, no, 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 it's not law, but it has been proposed, it is being supported, and currently there are people trying to move it through the stages of having it become law. That is a real thing. The Restrict Act is real. You can't all of a sudden say it's made up because it's been proposed, and there's a whole bunch of people who have commented on it, as well as right-wing media outlets. <sighs> anyway, let's get into net zero. Net zero, what is net zero? Again, it's one of these impossible things. It's funny how all of these things correlate with either 2050 or 2030. Everybody knows that the World Economic Forum has an agenda 2030. They have an agenda 2050. All of these impossible tasks, these unreasonable requests correlate exactly with these two agendas. And it also, if they all get put through, they weaken every single nation to a crazy extent, not just not just dependent on the state for certain things, but also literally weaker. There are people, there will be men who will literally be weaker if they just live off of lab-grown meat and soybeans. They'll become soy boys. All right, let's get into this. Climbs Australia's trend. Oh, I should show you quickly just what net zero is. Sorry, I know I don't interrupt clips. It's not my style. I apologize. Net zero refers to the balance between the amount of greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gas produced and the amount that's removed from the atmosphere. It is internationally agreed upon. Not true. I never agreed upon it. Did you? I don't remember doing that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember at all. Agreed upon goal for mitigating global warming in the second half of the century to keep global warming to no more than 1.5 Celsius. Emissions need to be reduced by 45% by, of course, 2030 and reach net zero by 2050. So that's just what it is. Just to let you guys know, let's get into this clip transition to net zero energy, which it plans to do by 2050, will only cost $120 billion. Meanwhile, the coalition is also pushing for more green energy investments and is talking about nuclear energy reactors. At least those will provide reliable baseload power, unlike renewables. But what if the net zero truths we've been fed were based on lies? That's what best-selling author Alex Epstein thinks, and he joins me now. Alex, you've detailed uh, every single net zero by 2050 myth we are fed. Which myth or myths do you see as the ones that are most urgently needing debunking? I mean, there are so many and people can check it out at energytalkingpoints.com. But I'd say the fundamental thing is that net zero is a good goal. Net zero means eliminate our climate impact. So 2050 means eliminate our impact on climate by 2050. Now, just philosophically speaking, why should this be your goal? Why aren't you focused on making the climate more livable by 2050, which requires a lot of energy? Why aren't you focused on getting energy to as many people as possible by 2050? And most fundamentally, why aren't you focused on global human flourishing by 2050? So my take is the reason they're so obsessed with eliminating our impact on climate is they believe that human impact on Earth is a bad thing. It's this immoral thing, and we should eliminate it at all costs. And that mentality is what leads net zero to have such catastrophic costs, and the advocates don't care. Consider what's happened in the United States, where our electric grid has been wrecked. Uh, you know, our energy prices have gone up. Uh, look at what happened to Europe with Putin and their vulnerability. Like the net zero movement promised us easy replacement of fossil fuels with unreliable solar and wind. That never made any sense, but it wasn't really sincere. They're not really focused on energy and human flourishing. They're just focused on eliminating our impact on Earth, and they don't really care about the human cost. 
Well, in Australia and in the UK, both sides of politics seem to be trying to sell us net zero. It is a and I do wonder why. Why isn't there this ideological debate, at least in those countries? Is it because they know it's a myth or is the prevailing narrative so strong that they don't have the courage to challenge it? Why have we got uh, in Australia, for example, both the Conservatives and the left with net zero targets? It's a good question, and I think it's probably more the second. I mean, there is this... Un I think of net zero as... It's both the most destructive idea in the world today, because if you actually did it, it would be the most destructive thing ever to happen to humanity in terms of lives lost, lives shortened, and poverty induced. Uh, and so there, there's that aspect of it. And yet it's the most popular political idea in the world today. And the whole kind of premise of it is that we should just look at the negative side effects of fossil fuels and that fossil fuels have no unique benefits. I think you said Bowen said it'll cost $120 billion to totally replace fossil fuels by 2050. Where on earth has he gotten this idea from? I mean, the world has spent $4 trillion subsidizing unreliable solar and wind, barely made a dent in fossil fuel use, caused a global energy crisis. So it's important. No nation in the world has come close to doing net zero. And every nation that moves in that direction suffers massive negative economic, including energy, consequences. So why is the whole world buying into something that no one can actually do and just small moves in that direction lead to failure and suffering? Well, it's clear by their behaviour, the behaviour of these politicians, that many of them don't actually believe the catastrophist uh, scaremongering they are feeding the public. Uh, not when you look at the way they buy waterfront homes. Oh, yesterday we learned in Australia here that the Greens leader had even chartered a couple of private plane trips. So it's uh, the actions and, and the preaching do not match up. The actions and their preaching do not match up. And believe me, that is by design. The one thing that came to mind as he's saying all this stuff, because he's talking about how they don't care about the human cost, and I think that's very clear. And I'm going to play one more clip just to show you where Ireland's at in terms of their uh, politicians, why something like this would be considered. Well, think about who's at the helm. So we'll get into that in a second. But the fact that he said they don't care about the human cost, it's very true. They're not thinking about that at all. You can tell because it's always farmers that they're going after. It's always the food supply. If you cared about the population, the, the, the masses, the last thing you would consider is touching the food supply. You'd think of travel. You'd think there's so many other things that you can touch on. I, I don't know. I don't get it. And, and here's the thing. Here's another thing really quick before I go. You'll know them by their fruits. Think about that. Okay. Just think about that. Think about what they're trying to do and how it impacts us. And it's happening all over the world. Think about that. They are focused on something that will have catastrophic effects on the general population. They're the people who are supposed to be taking care of us. But it seems like every step of the way, every decision they make gives them more power and us less power. It gives them more power and us less food. It gives them more power and us more surveillance. Every single thing. And this is worldwide. Worldwide. Now, let's talk about what uh, Ireland's actually dealing with. This person's a senator and she's talking about hate speech. Canada's actually r right along with these people when it comes to hate speech. Actually, I heard recently from the comments, actually, from the Canadian audience, Justin Trudeau is considering life sentences for those that commit hate speech. This woman's right on board with that notion. When you think about it, all law, all legislation is about the restriction of freedom. That's exactly what we're doing here, is we are restricting freedom, but we're doing it for the common good. You will see throughout our constitution, yes, you have rights, but they are restricted for the common good. Everything needs to be balanced. And if your views on other people's identities go to make their lives unsafe, insecure, and cause them such deep discomfort that they cannot live in peace, 
then I believe that it is our job as legislators to restrict those freedoms for the common good. For the common good, ladies and gentlemen, restrict those freedoms. That's what they're dealing with in terms of politicians. So it's no wonder a bill like this has been proposed. And again, the whole point of this video is that that's very real. So if you do hear about someone saying, I heard that's not a true story, it is a very true story. It is being talked about by their farmers. It is being talked about by their government. It is being talked about by people who are in Ireland who are watching it all happen. It is a very, very real thing. And the one thing I will tell you right now, how you know that this is an odd cult, is that they're trying to bring emissions down. This is a worldwide thing. China is not participating at all. Russia is not participating at all. India is not participating at all. That's how you know that this is a cult-like effort because there are millions, billions of people with what I just mentioned, billions of people, billions in these countries that are not participating in the slightest. So why is it in the West? Why is it throughout North America? Why is it in Europe that we're all falling victim to this? Again, it goes right back to what James said about what Jordan Peterson said. It's Gaia, Gaia worship, not just offering up cows to the weather, offering up people, you and I. Anyways, guys, like, subscribe, share. It helps tremendously. Other than that, I'm out.